Hello, everyone. You're listening to Speaking of Art School, an oral history project created to perpetuate the legacy and culture of the San Francisco Art Institute. I'm your host, Thomas Houston. Thanks for listening. We are on the air, as it were, and uh, my name is Thomas Houston. I'm the host of Speaking of Art School, which is a podcast interview series dedicated to perpetuating the culture and legacy of the San Francisco Art Institute. I'm an alum from 1984, and today is episode number 11, and I'm so excited to have uh, my friend Judy Gittleson on the other end of this interview. Judy is an alumnus from uh, the San Francisco Art Institute from the late 70s, and we have much to talk about today related to the arc of your creative life and um, art, music, family, and uh, and all things in between. So uh, uh, I have a few facts about you that I'll say you were, uh, you're from Portland, Oregon. Correct. And and you uh, you originally thought you were going to be an architect, which That's is right. super and interesting. Hello, everyone. Hello, <laughs> yes. hello. I'm Judy. <laughs> yes. Thrilled uh, to be here. It's it's really great. Um, so you thought you were going to be an architect, and uh, San Francisco Art Institute uh, had other plans for you, and uh, you went on to. Uh, to form a couple of punk bands, um, Pink Section and the Inflatable Boy Clams, and had a whole musical life that's still going on, and um, and now you're in Watsonville. So I'll I'll kind of let you roll it back, and uh, we also have a lot of pictures, and uh, it's just going to be super fun today. So you you can take it away, Judy. Well, thank you for having me, Thomas, and thanks for educating me, San Francisco Art Institute. And I did grow up in Portland, Oregon, and I actually aimed to be a farmer, and I have an exhibition with my cousin Danny, who was my farmer buddy, and I had chickens and rabbits and ducks, and Danny's dad we lived next door, and we grew up like siblings, and Danny's dad was an attorney and said, if you get a goat, I'll sue you, and... So I pivoted to uh, drawing floor plans and I had this great imaginative life of floor plans of these hippie families. And I was a child in this hippie family and that moved me into floor plans and the study of homes. And then I focused on architecture and went to the University of Oregon Architecture School and friends said, you should be an artist. And I applied and got accepted to CalArts in Southern California, and that's my big resume item. And on the way to CalArts, I stopped in San Francisco and just loved the city and loved the group of people that I sort of found my way into and modeled at the Art Institute and kept putting off CalArts. And then I um, ended up going to, Cal to the Art Institute. Awesome. Awesome. And there, and there you, there you were. <laughs> there I was. Yes, yes. And uh, and what what year approximately was that uh, that I you started? I think it there? was seventy nine. No, seventy eight, seventy nine. I moved to San Francisco in the spring of seventy seven. That number, I date, I remember. And then I put off going to CalArts and got a job at an art supply store and met Matthew Heckard and Stephen Wymore and moved to North Beach and hung out with them and sort of formed a little community and they were both going to the Art Institute. And so I think I started in fall of 78. 78, awesome. And and did that feel like you had uh, it, um, hit your, your home base uh, or in, in a way well, for I you? architecture school was very rigorous and yeah. um, we would stay up all night in order to do our presentations of two real architects and we 
were ambitious and rigorous and driven. And I visited CalArts and it too had that same rigor of nothing uh, short of perfect, you know, your whole thing. And the Art Institute was a wee bit lackadaisical. Right. And I'm a producer and I kept making and making and making and not necessarily uh, pristine making, but I keep going. And that's sort of my MO of um, art making is yeah. oh, what's next? What do I do next? Right, right. And well, so I felt yeah. the Art Institute, I was a little conflicted because I felt that it was a little tiny bit um, maybe pretentious in uh -huh. the word juxtaposition. People were analyzing your aesthetic and I thought well who hmm. are they to analyze my aesthetic rather than my productivity ah right 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 yeah interesting that's interesting yeah yeah I can see I can see that uh environment being more more relaxed and uh open-ended than than rigorous necessarily yeah uh, but uh what I did love was the time, the moment. Mm -hmm. We were in our late teens, early 20s, and we were just on our own, living, paying our own rent, performing, going to see our friends perform. And I remember this um, riding the bus, pretending I was under, I was school age for a nickel at two in the morning. And it was like, what a great moment that I could awesome. travel around San Francisco by myself as a young woman and live on my own. And, you know, we had very carefree and we also didn't have social media. So we were very mm. self-conscious and um, to a degree. And I'm really pleased that there are videos of these bands that I was in because that was not that common. And yeah, right. Right, right. Yeah. That's but that's it was it. a time. I went to school with Deborah Ayall and we painted together and Penelope Houston was there at the same time. And mm -hmm. you know, you painted in the the thing that I love about the Art Institute period was there were these big studio rooms and we all had our easels set up and we all just painted next to each other. And I grew up in an extended family that had a lot of creative social stuff. And so my uh, post uh, San Francisco Art Institute life has been pining for those community collaborative or or creating next to people who are yeah. also creative. Right, right. That's one of the things that I've uh, just from knowing you a little bit that uh, seems to be the thread uh, <clears throat> from mm -hmm. my, from my perspective is your uh, your sociability <clears throat> since art school. Right. Uh, probably before that even, but your sociability with uh, art making, being in bands, now having your own gallery and having art classes uh, for people um, in your in your gallery that's downtown. You're very uh, socially active. You're a socially yeah. motivated creator. <clears throat> uh, and I teach art to people with special needs and then I yeah. teach for golden paints and then I teach teenagers and I teach anyone but it's interesting being in the role of a teacher but what I've done that really works especially for people with special needs is having a real schedule and I do four things I do the introductions and everyone says their name and something about the topic and then I instructions and then we do it and then we review it yeah. and what I have found is that I do social creativity and that with this format each time each week or each whatever people know what to expect there's a subject and we interpret it and it really gives a lot of room for personalities and styles but it's again that mm -hmm. that um this is a discipline this is the way we do it to a degree and you are on your own once you're in the constraints. So yeah, that's interesting. <clears throat> Did it ever occur to you when you were a student that you might be an instructor someday? Was that in your radar at all? Uh, Not really. <clears throat> no, I was much more. I'm surprised I've been such a teacher, and mm -hmm. you know, maybe it was to teach myself because I apply the same disciplines to my work. It's like okay, this area, I'm working on this area, what am I working on? And like, even this one right behind me, I um, uh -huh. 
got a job uh, teaching art in the hospitals with the Creative Center for Women in Cancer in New York. And wow, I, interesting. Um, huh. Was working in the hospitals and teaching people bedside art. And one guy wow. had seizures and he was a pilot and he wanted to do perspective. And I looked up at the ceiling and I looked in sort of reverse of this. I went, oh, there's the letter Y. See that upside down Y right yep. there? Yep. And so I use that exercise and I take symbols and overlay them, known symbols. And I take a language that we're all familiar with, like letters. And so I, I don't know why, but I have an ability to translate three dimensions into two dimensions, which was very difficult for me. So, you know, we become a teacher yeah. of what we have to learn maybe, or something like that. Absolutely. Yes. But I pine for uh, friends that are creative. And right now I'm putting on a show with my cousin, Danny, and it's like, oh, this is what I want. Somebody who's creative and we're <laughs> in here together and I'm painting and he's putting up his work. And That's so great. I really value creative creativity and doing it near people and having a community right right you're 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 not one of those artists who just works in their studio solo and solitary all the right. time so right. uh interesting that's that's great that's really great um yeah so let's let's see i have a bunch of photos here that will continue to to uh stimulate our conversation so i'm just gonna i'm gonna open the photo album up here and um and then we can we can take it from there let's see i'm just gonna share my screen and your, your desktop is being shared right now yeah i'm just gonna go over here and um go over to the photos and and you and I are now over on the side of the screen. <clears throat> is that what it looks like to you still? Is uh, Yes, you can but see we're the... in your photos that it's not showing just that photo. It's showing the strip across. Yeah, right. Okay, that's okay. good. Okay, I'm going to go over here. And then <clears throat> there we go. Excellent. Okay. There here you going. are in all your young glory. <laughs> right. Isn't that fantastic that we were young ones and it's, photographed it's, too. It's, it's amazing. So I can stop these. We can go back and forth and you can just, uh, they'll change on their own every couple seconds or we can just go forward. Um, was this, uh, sorry, there we go. Let's go back. Um, was this while you were at SFAI, this photo? Do you recall? I do not recall. I think my friend Rick Soloway took this picture. Okay. Matthew Heckert took most of them and Rick, um, I met Rick right when I moved to San Francisco and I remember just uh, taking a lot of pictures with him. So this was probably 78, 79, okay. something that's, like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'll just keep going here. There's some, uh, there's some images from your schedules with pink section and um and we'll just keep going so this is pink section uh-huh this is um probably 7980 and down low is carol who's my best friend and uh -huh. carol and i were in all three bands together pink section the inflatable boy clams and the longshoreman awesome and then standing with the ring around his shirt is matthew heckert uh huh. And then Stephen Wymore and Matthew and Stephen and I lived together. And Matthew was my art institute buddy. And I think of the art institute, and I think of Matt Heckert. And I, awesome. And so we're all friendly. And Pink Section was great because uh, we had a career, or we had a we played. No one. I think we shared writing credit, and we didn't get really famous. Uh -huh. And I think we really retained appreciation for one another's gifts and that's awesome it was a delightful period it was just lovely that's great that is super cool I'll just that's a great picture by the way I just I yeah. love all the pictures <laughs> and these mm. that one may have been taken by George Westcott who sort of followed us around and was a great art institute uh alumni photographer aha uh -huh. interesting yeah We'll just keep going. Here's you in the tub. That's great. 
And uh, and this is when I think um, 1978 was a really pivotal, important year where um, Matthew and Stephen and I were living in North Beach and uh, we lived on the backside of Carol Dota's at the corner of Broadway in Columbus. Uh -huh. And our apartment caught on fire in the Dante's Hotel Inferno or wow. Dante Hotel Fire. So we called yeah. it, I called it Dante's Inferno. Dante. That's amazing. Dante's and Inferno. Deborah, I all lived in the same building and simultaneous to our personal loss was the um, Milk and Moscone. Yep. Mm. and Jonestown. Right. And it was really like we went from this period of just lit up freedom that I was sort of illuminating by the or describing by the riding the bus for a nickel at two in the morning and just going to the Mubuhe and playing yeah. and performing to sort of living in the mission. And Diane Feinstein became the mayor and it was just much less friendly. It was uh -huh. a real turn. Yeah. Interesting. Let's just keep going here. If any and of this was <laughs> early in San Francisco. This was, um, there's a building right across from uh, the city hall that I lived in with several friends. And this is in that building called Tenderloin West. Uh -huh. So this is um, me when I probably just moved to San Francisco or sort of in that period. And yeah. Awesome. I lived with uh, Barbie White, who later became my partner in Japanese Weekend, and uh -huh. Gary Miles, and Charlie Brown, and so we all lived yeah. in that building, and many of us lived in that building. That's great. There you were on the beach. And this was either by Matthew or for modeling for Linda Connor's class at uh -huh. Devil's Slide, or jerry bouchard's class right so awesome. i did a lot of photography modeling like that uh -huh. previous to um going to the school yeah awesome so culturally the school was really an epicenter education wise i felt like it was a little um like i rubbed rubbed against the educators i see yeah interesting let's see let's keep going here another pink section poster and uh was in this picture is me with the polka dots and barbie white of japanese weekend and charlie brown of voice farm and gary blaze who made harpsichords and clavichords and gary miles of voice farm down on the ground and that is uh -huh. who i recognize and remember that's great you all just look so wholesome isn't that amazing <laughs> it's it's just so great i just think well you'll awesome. appreciate this there's a very oregon flat-footedness you know that you are... <laughs> yeah oh, that's awesome that's awesome and here's a recent picture of course and this yeah, is me yeah, with yeah. matt heckard and carol detweiler and yeah. so we awesome. are in one another's lives a little bit and most of the photographs that of of the home living were Matthews. Most of these photographs are from Matthews too. Uh huh. Awesome. So. And Carol was the drummer in. Um, Carol was the drummer, drummer, and Pink Section went on a big tour, and we went on a few small tours, and uh -huh. then we broke up for who knows why. But yeah. um, Carol and I went on to form with JoJo Plantine, also from the Art Institute, the Inflatable Boy Clams. Right. Yeah, and it that's... was a real um, Pink Section was you know, in quotes, conventional rock music with a bass and a guitar and drums. Mm -hmm. and, but the Boy Clams was pure expression, screaming. Yeah. Uh, you know, we all played each other's instruments and very That's... performance art, but it was really an exciting creative expression. This is That's... the Boy Clams. And that That's... is awesome. Well, um, and it's <laughs> it's so cool because I... Personally, I became familiar with the Boy Clams probably back in about 82 or so when I was going to the Art Institute. So it's uh, it's exciting for me to know you now. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. <laughs> this and is so cool. On the right in the pink pants is jean um and she played sax a little bit with the 
club foot and all and the and mm -hmm. jojo had the band uh, the altar boys jojo's okay. on the left with the white and did a lot of performing with winston tong oh yeah sure yep yeah. with the uh, uh he was in uh tuxedo moon right that's yeah. correct right that's correct awesome let's go forward again and this is the boy clams and awesome and now um where did the name inflatable boy clams come from just out of curiosity well unfortunately memories kind of fail but carol i i vaguely remember that carol and jojo and i were on the telephone somehow and we each kind of came up with a word and the inflatable boy clams yeah. was uh -huh. sort of each of our contribution awesome that's great and this is pink section uh-huh and I think that one's by Rick Soloway as well. So okay. these are... There you are again. And let's keep going here. Ah, yes, there we go. <clears throat> and this, it looks like it's in a restaurant, but this was sort of, you know, the two in the morning post-performing breakfast or something like that, which uh -huh. was, I loved that part of it. I loved hanging out with these guys and, I think I had my 22nd birthday at the Deaf Club and, you know, we were really awesome. performing in 78, 79. We were uh -huh. really performing a lot. And, That's great. That's great. And here you are. And then these are Matthew's pictures of us after we moved from the mission, I, to the mission after we moved from North Beach. Mm-hmm. And I think that next to me is Mike Riley, who I was very close with. With He was in a band called The Situations, and they were um, very young. Mike moved to San Francisco when he was 16, and you awesome. know they were from Danville or something. And uh -huh. then joined Voice Farm. And... That's great. But everybody was sort of in bands and going to one another's performances and living together and uh-huh and this is Stephen and i matthew took that one and i love these young domestic life pictures right you took. It's, it's great it's great i love these photos they're so me great. too they really just kind of capture oh and this is just jumping right up to the current right. time here uh so this is a painting so i work for golden paints mm -hmm. and i'm a working artist and um they gave me a couple weeks at their residency and I did this piece and it's called Memoir, My Life in Three Parts. And the top row is crawling and clamoring out of Cannon Beach in Oregon. And the middle row is hip in San Francisco where I arrived cool, like what we just saw and then left with my daughter on my hip. And then the bottom row is hands and feet in Palo Alto where I moved with my daughter's father and fortunately my daughter went to school there and is now becoming a doctor or a surgeon wow. that's great but culturally it was like how did I end up here and uh just sort of ah you know it was a it was a real um in in this depiction kind of like a growing pain yeah. point right Right. And then it also facilitated this painting facilitated my move to Watsonville. It encapsulated my 60 years. And at age 60 ish, I moved to Watsonville. Uh huh. Awesome. And uh, that's great. So is this a really big painting? Uh, I'm just guessing. Yeah, that... it's I think it's um, when it's all spread out in one line like this is all it's 12 panels. OK, yeah. And each panel, I think think is 40 inches so I think that uh let's see I think it's 36 by 40 something like that or 36 by 48 each panel yeah that's and so it's about hmm, what is 16, that 16 16 by tw mm -hmm. uh, 16 feet wide and uh um, right nine feet tall yeah yeah wow. yeah that's that's awesome that's great excellent let's see and what i love about it stay on this for a minute what i yeah. love about this <clears throat> is the idea that you can do jump cut like especially where i'm holding the baby like the previous one has 
um, my elbow with the back of the baby and then you can hop to the next scene and it's like a film jump cut. Yeah. And that you can also change perspective in painting. And right above that one, the hand pulling back on the elbow with the butt and then, you know, a close up. Yeah. Awesome. And I enjoy that painting can be described in um, sort of multi dimensions, multi viewing spots at the same time. A, a, a cubism that's sort of a film thing that mm -hmm. you can go yeah. far and close. And like the one be behind me has a little bit of that, that it's sort of inside, outside, inside, and Let's that you see. can... We can move this over. There we go. We can move ourselves a little bit. That's and we awesome. can come back to this one since you're in a slideshow. That's yeah, that's awesome. Now, um, uh, did you work on these? Obviously, they're created individually. Did you work on these uh, um, at the same time? Um, generally speaking, um, the one yeah. that's um, your screen sharing memoir I completed in 2017 or 18, something uh -huh. like that. Okay. And awesome. then the one behind me, I'm just finishing in 2023, or I just yeah. finished now. Okay, awesome. Okay, so it looks like we've got about uh, 10 minutes left here. Um... And these are Matthew's pictures, and um, we were always making things, and I really enjoyed living with people that were always making things, and I still do that but the whole community was like making things and sharing things and art shows and performances yeah. and awesome let's go to the next one here that and a that is pretty cool picture carol and i i love that picture too and carol um has was in and coco buto i think is the name of it a japanese um buto dance company and ah. she moves and has a real good sense of music and she and i did a lot of the um background or the choral vocals to the longshoremen and did some dancing together and i've really enjoyed creating with carol a lot so she's been a real creator awesome. friend of mine yeah there you are holding a dress it looks like yeah and, and there was one before that that looked like i was doing something making on the dress who knows what it was but ah, that was, uh, yeah there's another pink section and then i think matthew um did this layout of this one but what's great about it is that it says it's december 8th of 1979 so that's really ah right good to cement a date december 8th 1979 oh man i had just moved to the city from the boondocks with my then girlfriend, uh, my now wife, uh, uh -huh. uh, November 12th. And uh, right before everything happened with Ann White and Harvey Milk. Oh, that month. That like month. you moved just there that we month. Just yeah. weeks before, yeah. Wow. And um, I think they were like three or four weeks. I love this picture. I love like one, how young and like that we're cooking for ourselves and we were on our own you know and it's uh that's awesome and yeah. then on the refrigerator is ivy's calendar of all the punk music that was per being played you know all the shows right awesome <laughs> that's great we'll just keep going this is a great photo i know there were were uh there were a few other photos that i think in the same uh room yeah. of different of your different um mates different band mates uh it's great i think that's backstage at the mabuhe gardens oh wow and i awesome. think george westcott took that picture uh-huh well i'm so glad and this is a backdrop we did for a video that um that's matthew and i for a pink section video that we uh -huh. painted all these Things and I did some books during the time that I sold at Carol Carol Alter's store on 16th Street. So like people had stores and uh huh. And 
in all of those And this bands. is us in Los Angeles. This is Pink Section. Um, and we played it. I remember Madame Wong's and right by right behind us is Hong Kong something. And we toured and a couple of times, I don't know, you know, memory is really yeah. interesting to have these friends who remember different aspects, but that was us performing or, you know, posing in uh -huh. Los Angeles. Awesome. There we go. And this is Japanese weekend. And I sort of went from pink section to Japanese weekend and. Uh-huh. Awesome. Japanese, and that's back to Los Angeles. And this is Matthew and I at home when we lived on Fresno Alley in okay. North Beach. Great. That's that was a awesome. really sweet moment. And people would stop by all the time. You know, it was just so many young people finding their way in the city and all in these bands. It was really lovely. That's great. That is awesome. And that's that same kitchen. Uh-huh. And this was uh, this was also North Beach, and that's Gary Miles. Um, and I made these a series of books called Debbie books, and that was us putting up posters for them. And you can see oh, all yeah. the sort of poster there, posters on the left of the Dills, and yeah. So it was very poster. And when Diane Feinstein came in, um, she sort of said, "No more street performing, and posters aren't allowed." So it was, yeah. Huh. Right. There you are in the pool. And I do not know where that was, but. <sighs> and then this is like the same, you know, here I am living and cooking and living like a teenager in in these houses, too. You know, it was a awesome artist, a teenage artist. That's and that's cute. Matthew and I looking like 12 year olds. I love the right. that picture. Yeah, right. That's awesome. And there you are again. Well, thank you for showing all these, Thomas. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's super fun. I figured we'd have more photos than we would have time to talk about, but it's always better to have more than, than less. So, uh, I think that's the last one. Nope, we're back to the beginning. Excellent. Okay. Well, what I'll do is uh, we'll go back. And here we are. Here we are. <laughs> awesome. I think we've got a couple minutes left. So uh, this has been great, Judy. <laughs> Thank you. And, Thank uh, you for hosting me, I'm, Thomas. I'm so glad we did this. And uh and then you've got your opening this weekend in your gallery for this new exhibit. So uh, yeah, Danny Georges, awesome. my cousin and I, and I'm going to bring a poster in for one second. So I'll walk back and you can. Oh, absolutely. Cut that yeah. in. Let me that put sounds, that up. That sounds great. So this is a poster of Danny and my work. Awesome. And we sold Excellent. that. He sold that photograph. And here's a close up of one of my paintings. Uh huh. And what's really cool is Danny and I grew up together and here we are showing his work and my yep. work together. So I'm thrilled about that. And it's uh, what That's... I want to do. And then I'm having a show in Portland, Oregon in October with my dear friend, Leith McFarland. And we're showing an interpretation of the Ghent altarpiece, which is wow. a, right. It's a big. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. 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 Huh. So. And that's in, when is that, the show? That's in October. In October. Oh, and wow. they do first Thursday. So October third, uh, October 5th is the opening of that one. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's great. But rounding back to the Art Institute, you know, yeah. I think it was a really hot period. And I think the school was part of the epicenter of this culture of just, you know, birthing all these creative young people doing what they wanted musically. and. Mm -hmm. Um, I agree. Yeah. So here we are. Uh, here we are. Here we are uh, you know, carrying on the legacy, doing what we do, 
and yeah, wherever we're doing it. So, so it's, good that you're, right. you know, keeping a flame going of the personalities that traveled yeah. through that time and webbing us together. And I had a show last year of 50 people that yeah. went to the Art Institute and that was a great yeah. show. And it was really cool to meet them and see how many of them are still doing work. And Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I was thrilled to be in that exhibit, by the way. And you were very helpful, too. That was very good. I leaned on you quite uh, a bit. It was my pleasure. Well, Judy, uh, I think we're out of time, but uh, thank you so much. And um, yeah, I'll see you um, in real space at some point in the near future, I hope. And, I think uh, so. And, uh, and I hope the, the uh, opening this weekend is is super fun and successful and i thank wish you. you all the best thank so, you thomas uh... you've been listening to speaking of art school an oral history project created to perpetuate the culture and legacy of the san francisco art institute I'm your host, Thomas M. Houston. If you're an alumni of SFAI and would like to participate in this project, please contact me at thomasmhoustonartist at gmail.com. Please stay tuned for upcoming episodes, and as always, thanks for listening. <laughs>